as internal resistance developed the body due to external disturbance okay and we use to calculate the stress as per the unit area okay so for example if you have body and force is acting there external force is acting there we can say the external disturbance okay and if you want to calculate the stress that means we have to take a unit area and in the unit area how much force is acting there okay if we divide force by the area we will get the stress quantity we can calculate the stress now if we see the unit unit no basically you can write as a pascal and the mega pascal pascal is basically your load load you basically our force we can write in terms of newton and the area we write in terms of meter so newton per meter square okay newton per meter square is basically on the pascal so we have a very short story here if you listen the story uh we'll never forget that uh, relation between that force and the stress okay so there is one thief the name of the thief was newton and one day he kept something and police was running behind him so what happened when the police was chasing him for a lot of this the one eye did click the mind of the thief that name of the thief as newton so what he did he draw a square of 1 meter and 1 meter and stand over it and when thief comes to him and catch him he says no 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 i am not newton i am pascal okay so why is pascal basically when newton stand on a square of 1 meter by 1 meter but the name of the newton will change that will be the pascal so this is the basically story between the newton and the pascal so newton is a force the pascal is a stress so basically force by the area okay force by the area means one newton force acting in 1 meter plus 1 meter area then we call that is a pascal okay so another popular unit we use that is mega pascal mega pascal means 10 to the power 6 pascal so if you calculate it it will basically convert newton into millimeter square okay so basically here you will see pascal is newton per meter square and mpa that is equal to 10 to the power 6 pascal if we write that unit it will come newton per millimeter square okay so i hope you don't have any doubt what is the force what is the stress and what is the unit of it what is the newton newton is a force pascal is basically a stress component basically one newton force acting in one meter square area that is our uh, stress or unit of the stress okay now if we see that force by area the stress that only that information is not sufficient to get all the information okay If the force acting in the area is perpendicular in nature, okay. If the force acting in this area here, if you see this figure, the force here basically acting, which is perpendicular or you can say normal to this area, okay. Then the stress generating here is used to call as a normal stress, okay. So when load act perpendicular to the axis of the member, okay, perpendicular to the axis of the member. And then the stress generated due to that force we call the normal stress okay now if the force is not perpendicular the force acting in that area and that is tangential in nature okay so here you see two bodies two bodies connected and force is acting okay and this is that basically connect contact area force is not acting in this direction force is not acting in this direction force is acting which is tangential to that area and then stress develop here we used to call the shear stress okay so now if you see how we used to denote that normal stress and the shear stress normal stress basically we used to write in terms of sigma in terms of sigma okay and we used to write 
as x x first x here basically is to show in which plane it is acting and second x here it is saying at which direction okay since both are that acting on that both of the term are x x so some book simply write sigma x that is basically normal stress acting in the x plane okay the x plane means the plane which is perpendicular to the x axis that we used to call x plane okay and shear stress we basically denote in terms of tau tau x y so we have normal stress sigma x x sigma y y and sigma z z if we have a three axis system okay if we are talking about the cartesian coordinate system so we will have three normal stress that is sigma x x sigma y y and the sigma z z okay now if we talk about the shear stress shear stress basically we used to denote in terms of tau x y okay tau y x tau z x like that okay similarly another term we will have tau x z we can have tau y z okay and tau z y so here you can see we have three normal components sigma x x sigma y y sigma z z and we have total six stress component acting on a plane okay so total we will have three normal plus six nine stress component if we talk about cartesian coordinate systems okay so here shear stress basically here tau x y x basically it is saying it is x plane and in the y direction okay we'll see how we can uh, write it okay in a pictorial form okay, we'll see one uh, image and we'll see how we can denote it in a particular figure okay so we have learned what is the stress what is the normal stress what is the shear stress and also we have learned what is the unit of the stress what that basically relation between newton and the pascal and how many number of stress component can act in a uh, in a plane in a plane we can have basically three stress component so one is that if you talk about that x plane then we can have sigma xx then again we in the sigma x plane y direction we can have sigma x plane z direction so like that in a x plane we can have three stress component okay so if you write in a vector form then we used to call it a stress vector okay this also sometimes is called the traction okay so since we have three plane the three plane will have three stress vector okay totality of that stress vector you can say as a stress tensor okay so if you write the all the stress component acting in a uh, cartesian coordinate system in three plane okay and if you write it in a matrix form okay that stress matrix is called the stress tensor okay so stress is basically if you generalize the definition of a stress you can say stress is a tensor okay stress cannot be a scalar quantity stress you can write in vector form you only take one plane and if you write it and totality of all the stress component acting in three perpendicular act uh, plane okay the totality of the vector means total nine stress component will be there totality of the stress to write in a matrix form then we used to say the stress as a tensor okay so why it is called tensor that is a different issue where that i'll discuss okay so now what we have learned stress basically one resistance and stress is not the scalar quantity whenever we're talking about stress that force by area okay in that case in normal cases we implicitly saying that direction of the force okay so basically when we are talking anything related to the direction and the magnitude is a vector okay so basic one component of a stress okay one component for example sigma xx one component of the stress is a vector quantity because this has a magnitude and it also has a direction and if you see the totality of the stress acting in a three perpendicular plane okay then we we'll say stress is a tensor okay so stress can be written as a vector form that also known as a traction stress in general is a 
tensor quantity that basically stress component nine stress component acting in three mutually perpendicular plane and that stress component we can say as a tensor so here you just see that what is the normal stress what is the shear stress okay what is the stress vector and what is the tensor stress tensor okay so normal stress basically if you see that plane the definition of the plane should be clear so here this is our x plane this is our x plane okay x plane means the plane which is perpendicular to the x axis is the x plane again the plane which is perpendicular to the y axis this is y axis okay this plane this plane is perpendicular to the y axis so basically this is y plane similarly we will have a z plane okay now and the if you think about the stress acting in the x plane so stress acting in the x plane okay so just acting in the x plane that is our one in the normal stress sigma xx which is perpendicular to that plane xx and other two component will have the tau xy and tau yx so to what is the tau xy sorry tau xy and tau x z okay what is tau xy so tau xy basically is first x here indicating the plane the shear stress acting in the plane so here shear stress acting in the plane and in the direction of y so basically this is your tau xy what is tau xz that again shear stress acting in the x plane in the direction of z okay similarly if we think of your y plane in the y plane also we will have this stress component sigma yy that which is perpendicular to the y plane tau yx that is stress acting in the y plane in the direction of x in the direction of x and stress component acting in the z plane in the in the direction of z stress acting in that y plane stress acting in the y plane in the direction of z stress acting in the y plane in the direction of z okay now if you think about that z plane third plane that is z plane we have sigma z z basically sigma z z the stress acting in the z plane in the direction of z okay sigma act, acting in the z plane in the direction of z sigma z z and shear stress that is our tau zx and tau zy so shear stress acting in the z plane in the direction of x okay so now if you want to write all the stress component acting in three mutually perpendicular direct plane okay there are total nine component okay and nine component and this totality of this nine component if you write in a matrix form we is to say that stress is a tensor quantity okay now if you want to write stress acting on a one particular plane then we can say that is our stress vector sigma xx sigma y sigma xy sigma xy and sigma xz okay like that we can write our as a vector form okay now i also already mentioned that uh, what is stress what is normal stress what is shear stress what is stress vector what is stress tensor okay now another definition is that the state of stress at a point okay what does it mean state of stress at a point basically it is talking about stress quantity acting in a point okay so stress quantity if you want to find stress quantity acting in a plane in that case what happen we have to draw a number of plane we okay we put number of plane and the stress component acting in the plane okay the totality of all the stress component we used to say that state of stress at a point okay so we have a body we have a body okay we have a body and we want to and in the inside the body we have particular point and we want to find the stress component acting in the point okay that we can 
that stress acting in the point can be identified by that plane because already we informed that we have in particular plane we have three component okay one is that uh, normal stress another is your shear stress another will be shear stress okay so now if we have how many number of plane we can how many number of plane we can draw through a point we can have infinite number of plane okay so i'm drawing a line but it's basically you can imagine as a plane like this so we can have a infinite number of plane which can pass through that particular point that means we can we can have a infinite number of stress component which is acting in a particular point and totality of all the stress component we used to call state of stress at a point okay now this is very important uh, to identify which is the critical plane okay which is the critical plane and what are the critical stress because that critical plane and the critical stress uh, important because that is uh, the plane or that point where our our metal will first start damaging okay the damage will start from that complete critical point only okay so for that point of view we need the information of critical stress and the critical point okay now since there can be infinite number of plane which can pass through a particular point so means we can have infinite number of stress component and as the engineer we are not able to we will not be able to deal with that infinite number of stress component okay so we need some simplification okay now simply version of that state of stress at a particular point is that if we are able to identify the stress component acting in three mutually perpendicular direction okay or mutually perpendicular plane okay stress component which is acting in three mutually perpendicular plane then that that stress component is sufficient to determine the stress component acting in any other plane okay so now how many number of number of uh, stress component act in a three mutually perpendicular plane so already we discussed we can have total nine stress component okay so we can have we can have our x plane we can have our y plane we can have our z plane okay and this three mutually perpendicular plane we have total nine stress component okay that basically if you write it that also basically we say stress tensor okay this stress component which is acting in three mutually perpendicular plane is sufficient to identify the stress component acting in any other plane if you know that angle of the plane we can identify the stress component acting in particular particular plane okay so basically the state of a stress is that the state of stress of a point basically it is saying that stress component acting through acting on a plane which can passes on the plane since we can have infinite number of planes so we can have a infinite number of stress in a if you want to identify the state of stress at a particular point again three mutually perpendicular plane is sufficient okay to identify the stress component acting in any other plane okay so basically state of stress at a point is indicating the three nine stress component acting in three mutually perpendicular direction okay so it is we are talking about our cartesian coordinate system it can be any other uh, systems but in that case that plane should be orthogonal or orthonormal to each other okay then the stress component acting in that orthogonal plane or orthonormal plane that should be sufficient to identify the stress component acting in any other arbitrary plane okay i hope that will that will help you now next question is why is that stress as a tensor what are the property we have that i'll discuss later okay let me stop it here thank you